The Russian Tech EOS 240RBW is a basic all-in-one liquid CPU cooler that has addressable RGB LEDs and a rather nice surprise. This CPU cooler is available for around 70 US dollars or the equivalent in euros and for this price this cooler has a lot of competition especially from newcomers into the industry and what does the EOS 240RBW has to offer for this price well the highlight of this CPU cooler is the pump it's installed on the side of the radiator and not inside the water block this is done of course to bypass the acetic patent and to make the installation of this cooler easier with the pump installed elsewhere you can install the CPU water block in any orientation you so desire the CPU cooler uses a regular 240mm radiator which is made from aluminum. The fins per inch density looks about the same as other standard aluminum made radiators. The only difference here with its radiator is that while it has the standard dimensions, well, it isn't, as it's a bit longer to accommodate for the integrated pump. As I've said in the beginning of this video, this CPU cooler has its pump attached to the radiator on the side. This will remove any potential air pockets inside the loop as the pump is next to the main bulk of the liquid. The CPU block is made from plastic and not tall at all. That is again because it has no pump inside it. The plastic structure is ok for the most part but feels cheap because there is no way to it and also has this hollow feel. The design is simple to describe, you either like it or you don't. There is plenty of RGB here, both on the edges in the shape of a ring and in the middle with the Ryzen Tech logo. Also this logo can be rotated to accommodate your build. The base plate used on the EOS 240RBW is made from solid copper and it has a smooth surface. The copper plate is attached to the water block with no less than 10 torque screws. Making them torque screws and not something obscure to make this cooler harder to service is a nice touch, although you should have no business inside the water block as the pump is inside elsewhere. This shows that Rajitek does care about their products even past their warranty period. The tubes of this cooler are covered by high quality sleeving, this is a standard woven type sleeving that is tear and scratch resistant. It looks good, it is flexible and adds more detail to the design of the cooler. It's nothing much but it's honest work. The fittings used on the EOS 240RBW are angled to 90 degrees on the CPU block side and straight on the radiator side. As is the case these days, all fittings are made from some type of plastic composite instead of metal. This is done to keep the price of these coolers lower and to get the production going faster. The fans included with the EOS 240RBW have the standard 120x25mm dimensions. The minimum speed is 800rpm and the maximum speed is 1800rpm. These fans use a hydraulic bearing system and have a lifespan of around 40,000 hours. The shape of the impellers indicate that these fans should do good on a radiator but we shall see about that when we test the CPU cooler. When we talk about the connectors and wires, this cooler has the same issues as other RGB CPU coolers available on the market. It has a lot of wires. First, the CPU block has two wires with two connectors, both for the RGB LEDs installed inside. Then on the radiator side, the pump has its own wire with a standard SATA connector for power. This means that the pump will work at maximum speed all the time. And finally, the two fans, each with two cables and three connectors, one for power and two for RGB. This totals at no less than seven separate connectors and wires, all for basically just pretty lights and one pump and two fans. Speaking of which, these fans are suspiciously similar with the Silverstone Air Blazer series, but you did not hear that from me. In all seriousness, more than likely these fans use a common made fan frame and impeller design. It's nothing uncommon or unethical, it's just more cost reduction at the end of the day. The accessories included with this cooler are what you can expect given the price and what type of cooler this is. We have a user manual, a pair of brackets for AMD and Intel, a universal backplate which is made unfortunately out of plastic, a dedicated AM4 backplate, backplate screws and plenty of screws that have their length, shape and thread pitch adjusted for their purpose. You also get a small pack of thermal compound. Installing this cooler is very simple. First, you take the relevant bracket 
in my case the Intel one, and attach it to the underside of the water block and secure it with these small screws. Then get the backplate and insert the hex screws in the correct slots. Afterwards you place the backplate on the back of the CPU socket and at the front you use these metal nuts to secure the studs and backplate in place. Afterwards you apply the thermal compound and install the CPU block on the CPU. You secure that one with these metal thumb screws and you are done. Afterwards you install the fans on the radiator and the radiator where you want it. That's really depending on what case you use. And with the cooler installed we can safely say that this CPU cooler is not bad looking at all. The CPU block design is not for everyone, it looks like something that jumped straight out of a video game, but it's not bad either, it's certainly much better than other designs we've seen lately. Before we test this cooler, you will hear a noise sample of this cooler and its pump. I am doing this because while a decibel value is useful, it does not consider the unwanted noises such as fan vibrating on the radiator or a whine from the pump. Speaking of the pump, And while the pump is running at maximum RPM, the noise is not that bad, however what is bad is the fact that this pump is making a rather irritating high pitched whine. And to add insult to injury, thanks to its position inside the radiator, which is usually installed at the top of the case, you will not dampen this noise, which is unfortunate. Moving on with the actual noise of the cooler and its fans, which are running at their maximum speed of 1800 RPM. With two 120mm fans spinning at 1800rpm, the Ryzen Tech EOS 240RBW reached a maximum noise output of 39 decibels, with the measuring device placed at a distance of 10cm away from the system and the CPU cooler. This value is no surprising as these fans do spin at 1800rpm. More importantly, to say here is that while the noise output is not low, it's not that high either, given the circumstances. The testing of all CPU coolers is done using an Intel i9-9900K CPU which is running at both its factory frequency and it is then overclocked manually to 5GHz on all cores. The first test uses the Intel Burn Test V2 benchmark, a synthetic benchmark that places a load onto the CPU which is similar with what you can get and will encounter in your daily usage, especially when gaming. And in this test, the Ryzen Tech EOS 240RBW reached a maximum temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, with the CPU running at 5 GHz on all cores and the ambient temperature fixed at 26 degrees Celsius. However, the next test is where each CPU cooler is pushed to its limits, as this test uses the system stability test of the AIDA64 Extreme software. This is a synthetic benchmark that places an unrealistically high load on the CPU, something which you will never encounter in your daily usage unless you do heavy video rendering with the CPU as the only rendering unit. And in this test, the Ryzen Tech EOS 240RBW reached a maximum temperature of 88 degrees Celsius, with the ambient temperature set at 26 degrees Celsius. This places the CPU cooler next to models such as the Silverson Hydrogon D120 or the Noctua NH-U12S Redux. The Ryzen Tech EOS 240RBW can be had for around 70 US dollars or the equivalent in euros. This price is the highlight of this CPU cooler. This is a good price for what is a good CPU cooler. It's not the best CPU cooler out there and that's for many reasons, however it does perform good. The cooling performance is good, but the noise output could have been a bit lower, especially with these fans which do spin at 1800rpm. Another shortcoming of this CPU cooler in terms of the noise output is the pump. It has an average to low noise output, however, the actual noise it produces is quite irritating as it's one of those high pitch whines. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something you need to be aware of before you buy something. Fortunately, the rest of the cooler is doing alright with the nice output. The build quality is good, albeit the usage of plastic is extensive, especially on the CPU block side of things. Fortunately, this cooler uses a good mounting system that requires little mental effort to install and most of these components are made from metal. 
This cooler is for everyone that wants a good RGB system and a good performance out of the box, but don't want to spend a lot of it. In this case, the Ryzen Tech EOS 240RBW delivers what it promises and more. However, it should not be compared with expensive coolers, as those are not only more expensive, but might come with other issues, as nothing is made perfect. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more, and also if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages of this channel.